Well, I have done Oscar ranking videos for the wins in Best Actor, Best Actress, and Best Supporting Actor of the 2010s. Now it's time for Best Supporting Actress. Hi, it's Brian. Welcome to the Awards Contender, and let's get right to it. Ranking the Best Supporting Actress Oscar victories of the 2010s. Let's begin with number 10, Alicia Vikander, The Danish Girl. You need to tell me when Hendrik and Lily are together, they what? They, they kiss. So there have been some wonderful wins at the Oscars in the 2010s in the Best Supporting Actress category. Most of the wins I'm going to talk about in this video, I feel pretty good about. Some I'm very passionate about. Like, really happy with many of these wins, but such is not the case for Alicia Vikander, who won Best Supporting Actress in early 2016 for Tom Hooper's so-so costume drama, The Danish Girl. She is fine in this movie. It's not a bad performance. She gets to emote in a lot of scenes. She has a nice chemistry with Eddie Redmayne, who plays the title character. He also got an Oscar nomination for Best Actor. I just found the movie overall to be very creaky, kind of cringy at times. And I didn't think either actor in the movie was Oscar worthy. Like they're both good, not great. But what puts this at the bottom? Why Vikander is number 10 and not like eight or seven or something is two reasons. One, I do think this is very much a lead performance. This isn't really supporting for Vikander in The Danish Girl. She was rightfully nominated at the Golden Globes and at BAFTA in lead actress for The Danish Girl. Not supporting, but at the Oscars, she's put into supporting. This category fraud helps her get nominated. It helps her win. As I've talked about on the channel before, category fraud doesn't always bother me. But in this situation, she should have been lead actress at the Oscars for The Danish Girl because the second reason this Oscar win kind of pisses me off is that she should have won Best Supporting Actress at the Oscars the same year for a different movie, Ex Machina. That was my favorite film of 2015. I have watched it multiple times and the Vikander performance is so bold and courageous and original. Like in the world of science fiction filmmaking, like of all the great performances we've seen in the movies in that genre, I think Alicia Vikander is one of the very best and she's not even nominated for Ex Machina. She's nominated for The Danish Girl, which is just very much an Oscar Beatty movie that came and went. Nobody really talks about that movie these days. And she wins for that? No thanks. The win in this category that year should have been Kate Winslet for Steve Jobs. And Tom, where are you? My director, thank you so much for your support and belief in me. Number nine, Laura Dern, Marriage Story. She's a virgin who gives birth, unwaveringly supports her child and holds his dead body when he's gone. And the dad isn't there. This one kind of baffled me. I don't know about you. I was very confused throughout the 2020 award season to see Laura Dern sweep for this performance in Noah Baumbach's Marriage Story. Like as that quirky kind of eccentric lawyer, she's clearly having fun. It's an entertaining performance, but there's nothing special about it. It's not an overly memorable performance by any means. I remember watching Marriage Story and enjoying her performance, but when she got in at the Golden Globes and Supporting Actress, I was like, oh, okay, that's a choice. And then she wins there, which was a surprise to me, and then she never stopped winning, all the way to Oscar nights. Like, there was nobody else in Supporting Actress that year who could stop her. I just, I, I didn't see it. I didn't understand. I mean, I know we all love Laura Dern. I think part of it was she's done such good work throughout the decades. This was a moment to honor her. Another thing is that Marriage Story was a very well-liked movie, and this was the one category the Academy could give it something. She's also really good in Little Women from the same year, and I feel like Academy voters were like, well, 
There's no one else in the category that's super strong, so let's just go with Laura Dern this year, give the woman an Academy Award, and that happens at the Oscars all the time, pretty much every year, at least one of the acting winners will give a performance that I'm like, well, that was good. I don't know if it's Oscar-worthy, but it's nice to see this person with an Oscar trophy. That was definitely the case for Dern in early 2020. Again, the category that year was pretty weak, but in that field of five, I would have voted for Florence Pugh in Little Women. I share this with my acting heroes, my legends, Diane Ladd and Bruce Dern. <laughs> Number eight, Melissa Leo, The Fighter. Who's gonna look after you, sweetheart? I mean, come on. I know you don't understand it, but I had nine kids, and I love every one of you the same. Now, basically, from here on out, I'm talking about performances I like or love. Melissa Leo in David O. Russell's The Fighter gives a very good performance. She is kind of chewing the scenery as that mother. You can't take your eyes away from her. Her physical look is great. She's got a strength about her in her mini scenes with Christian Bale and Mark Wahlberg and Amy Adams and many others. This Oscar nomination for Melissa Leo came at just the right time because she had received a Best Actress nomination two years before for Frozen River, which she is incredible in. I love her performance in Frozen River. And in a competitive category in early 2011 at the Oscars, Best Supporting Actress, I could have seen, really, any of those women winning. Maybe not Jackie Weaver for Animal Kingdom, but Helena Bonham Carter won the BAFTA Award that year in Best Supporting Actress for The King's Speech. Amy Adams is also great in The Fighter, and she was on her third nomination without a win. And Haley Steinfeld for True Grits, I mean, talk about category fraud, that's not a supporting performance. But I felt like in those closing weeks, she was gathering momentum for True Grits. That movie came out very late, and she is wonderful in it. I felt like there could have been a surprise that year in Supporting Actress since Melissa Leo did not win everything. But I think the originality of this performance mixed with her previous Oscar nomination for Frozen River, it was just the right role for her at the right time. And so she won, accepted her prize from Kirk Douglas and gave not so great of a speech. As I talked about in a recent video, this is one of my least favorite Oscar acceptance speeches. But again, she gives a solid performance in The Fighter. However, my choice in this category would have been an actor from the same movie. The great Amy Adams should have an Oscar by now. And I feel like if there was a performance she could have won for, like she had a shot, it would have been for The Fighter. So my vote that year would have gone to Amy Adams for The Fighter. When I watched Kate two years ago, it looked so easy. Oops. <laughs> Number seven, Anne Hathaway, Les Miserables. Boss wouldn't like it. Yes, it's true. There's a child and the child is my daughter. So, confession. I don't know if I have explicitly stated this on the channel. I do not like Les Miserables. Tom Hooper's 2012 musical adaptation I found to be a major slog. I remember being so excited for it. I took my mom and my aunts, and when the lights went down, I was ready for greatness. I mean, Hugh Jackman and Anne Hathaway and Russell Crowe. The trailers filled me with excitement, but very early on, I was like, oh... This is going to be rough. This is going to be a very rough movie. I mean, I admired elements of it, including the performances, especially by Jackman and Hathaway. Like, they're doing really good work in that movie, even though I did not connect to this one at all and was very happy when the end credits arrived. I was thrilled. Still, I was able to be impressed by Hathaway in her mini scenes near the beginning, that long emotional take of her singing I Dreamed a Dream is kind of stunning. Like she is bringing it there, she knows this is her moment. I mean, it's a very Oscar Beatty role. I can imagine going into this project, Anne Hathaway had to be thinking, hmm, just got an Oscar nomination and Best Actress for Rachel Getting Married, and this could be the one to get me the Oscar. It had to have crossed her mind. Come on. 
So yeah, even though I didn't care for the movie, she's very good in it. I still wouldn't have given her the Oscar. My choice here might surprise you. At the Oscars in early 2013, my vote in supporting actress would have gone to Helen Hunt in the sessions. I think she is great in that movie. It came true. <laughs> oh. Number six, Allison Janney, I, Tanya. I didn't stay home making apple brown Bettys. No, I made you a champion. Knowing you'd hate me for it. That's the sacrifice a mother makes. I wish I'd had a mother like me instead of nice. Nice gets you shit. I have always adored Allison Janney, basically from the first time I saw her in a movie, probably in the 90s, like Private Parts or something. I have just always dug her vibe. I find her very funny, very creative, in a variety of mostly supporting performances in film and TV. We get to 2017, I, Tanya comes out, and there's a lot of acclaim for Margot Robbie's performance as Tanya Harding, but Allison Janney is such a scene stealer in that film as her mom. Like every time she is on screen, you are just in pure delight. The bird on her shoulder, her physical look, her chain smoking, the way she says her dialogue. Like, this is a very memorable Allison Janney performance. I understand why it swept. I feel like the industry loves her and they were just waiting for her moments. Like, she had had so many awards for TV projects like The West Wing and things. But no matter how good she had been in a variety of movies like American Beauty and The Hours and especially The Way, Way Back. She is so freaking funny in The Way, Way Back. She just got a very meaty role in I, Tanya that was flashy, based on a real person, which the Academy adores. And so this win makes sense. I'm happy Allison Janney has an Academy Award. But even though I did really enjoy her performance in I, Tanya, I was kind of baffled all season long why Lori Metcalf was not getting more love in terms of award wins for her amazing performance also as a mother in Greta Gerwig's Lady Bird. As much as I like Janie in I, Tanya, my vote here would have gone to Metcalf for Lady Bird. I did it all by myself. Number five, Viola Davis, Fences. And upstairs in that bedroom with the darkness falling in on me, I gave everything I had to try and erase the doubt that you wasn't the finest man in the world and wherever you was going, I was going to be there with you because you was my husband. What a spectacular performance Viola Davis gives in Fences, directed by Denzel Washington from 2016. I was pretty bowled over in the theater by her work in this movie. She can be delicate and vulnerable, but also really strong at times. There are so many layers to this character that she gets to portray throughout the movie. She can be in shadow in the corner of a room, very soft-spoken, but then in other scenes have the camera pressed to her face as she screams and cries to her husband like in her most famous scene from that movie like that moment is definitely capital a acting right like acting with a capital a that's viola davis in that moment when she is crying and slobbering but it is so mesmerizing to watch someone as good as she is as an actor giving this role her all she had played this role on the stage before so she was very familiar with it, very comfortable in this character, a wife and mother who has in every way put her husband first, even though later in life she's not sure if he was worth it. She and Washington have dazzling chemistry in this, and so I'm very happy the great Viola Davis won an Oscar for Fences. So why is this at number five and not number three or two or one? As I've talked about in a previous video, it's the category fraud of it all. I have always felt Viola Davis in Fences is a lead performance. Like there's nothing supporting about it at all. I mean, I guess you could argue because Denzel Washington is such the face of the movie, his character is all over it because her character in the movie 
is kind of subordinate to him in a way that she's also the supporting actress i mean i guess but she's in what like almost an hour of the movie it's not really to me a supporting performance and i do think if she had gone lead and not supporting she probably would have won best actress over emma stone in la la land i felt like someone could have overtaken stone that season and the problem was we didn't have a consensus choice. Like there were some votes going to Natalie Portman for Jackie, some votes going to Isabelle Huppert for Elle. Five years before, Davis almost won Best Actress for The Help, and so I do think she probably would have beaten Stone. We'll never know, of course, but at the end of the day, I love this performance by Davis in Fences, and I love that she has an Oscar. You teach me every day how to live, how to love. I'm so glad that you are the foundation of my life. Thank you to the Academy. Thank you. Number four, Octavia Spencer, The Help. And look, now I ain't messing around no more. Now, Mr. Johnny gonna catch me here and shoot me dead right here on this no wax flow. Speaking of The Help, here's another great Oscar win and Best Supporting Actress of the 2010s. I have always loved Octavia Spencer throughout the decades. She has always been such an interesting character actor, whether she's in a comedy or a drama. She always brings her A-game. She's always fun to watch. I love that she's gotten two more Oscar nominations in Supporting Actress for Hidden Figures and The Shape of Water. She's also great in those, but she is especially fantastic in The Help. She is, in many ways, the heart and soul of that movie. She is hilarious at times, very moving in scenes, and an absolutely glorious ensemble cast, including Viola Davis and Allison Janney and Emma Stone. I feel like everything goes back to the help, right? Octavia Spencer is the clear standout in The Help. I'm so happy she won. I mean, there are some other great performances in her category, especially Melissa McCarthy in Bridesmaids. That is one of my favorite Oscar nominations in any category of the 2010s, but I do think Spencer was the right winner here. What a phenomenal performance. Thank you, Academy, for putting me with the hottest guy in the room. Um. <laughs> Number three, Regina King, If Beale Street Could Talk. What difference does it make how he gets here? The child ain't got nothing to do with that. Ain't none of us got nothing to do with that. Oh, how I adore this Oscar win for Regina King in early 2019. I adore it for many reasons. One, she is incredible in that movie. As that fierce and strong mother, she has some truly memorable moments. She is smart, she is fiery. This is a brilliant performance in a very underrated movie. Barry Jenkins' follow-up to Moonlight did okay that award season. I was surprised it didn't do better in categories like picture and director, lead actor, lead actress. But thank God Regina King got noticed for a wonderful performance that honestly could have been ignored. Like if enough Academy members, enough voters just didn't see the movie, like it put their DVD screener at the bottom of the pile, I was a little nervous about King's chances to win there because she was not nominated at SAG or at BAFTA. Like she wasn't even nominated at either of those two major precursor ceremonies. And because If Beale Street Could Talk was underperforming in so many of the top categories, I was doubtful she was going to win. I was so happy when she did. Because another thing I love about this win, usually your movie needs to be in Best Picture or in another acting category. There needs to be typically a lot of love for your film to win an acting Oscar. And because If Beale Street Could Talk only got into supporting actress, adapted screenplay, and score, I was delighted to see Regina King win her very much deserved Oscar trophy. This is a great Oscar win for Best Supporting Actress. So it's appropriate for me to be standing here because I'm an example of what it looks like when support and love is poured into someone. Number two, Patricia Arquette, Boyhood. Well, that won't be a problem. He can call grandma and she'll tell him. Or he can call information. 
We won't be hard to find. What a unique acting Oscar win this is for Arquette. I mean, think about it. She started acting in this movie, Boyhood, in the summer of 2002. Like, she started acting in this movie more than a decade before she wins her Academy Award. That's not typically how this works out. Typically, you win an Academy Award for a film you've made in the last two or three years, not the last, like, 14 years, right? In some ways, Patricia Arquette had an advantage in that she got to explore a character over a dozen years of filming. She got to discover every nuance of this person aging over many years. I think this movie is extraordinary in every way. Richard Linklater's 12-year experiment, which for me turned out as good as it possibly could have. It goes so much deeper than a coming-of-age story about a boy growing into to a young man. Link later is also very interested in his dynamics with his mother and father and the lives of the mother and father. Ethan Hawke is excellent in this. I was so happy to see him get a Best Supporting Actor nomination. But Patricia Arquette is so emotionally devastating in this movie. First in the way her character grows and changes and becomes smarter and stronger, pushing back against bad men in her life and being self-sufficient. Like the arc of her character, her character's journey, I've always found to be very moving. And second, her last scene. Like her last scene in that film, that was probably my favorite scene in a movie in 2014. It is so perfectly written and acted. It feels so real. Part of her emotion probably came from the fact that she had been living this character for 12 years and it was coming to an end. But this moment just smacks you across the face and you can never forget it. Patricia Arquette is exquisite in boyhood and I will always love this Oscar win. It's our time to have wage equality once and for all and equal rights for women in the United States of America. And now that takes me to my number one choice, which you probably saw coming if you've been watching my channel, if you've seen some of my Oscar top 10 videos about great acting Oscar wins. I've talked about this one before. My number one choice is Lupita Nyong'o, 12 Years a Slave. 500 pounds of cotton, day in, day out. More than any man here. And for that, I will be clean. That's all I ask. Lupita Nyong'o is such a sublime actress. Whenever she shows up in a project, I am excited to see what she's going to deliver to us. Every performance she gives comes from a place of truth, of reality. She's able to embody her characters in such a way that is always fascinating and mesmerizing. Whether she's in a horror film like Us or A Quiet Place Day One, or a somber affecting drama like 12 Years a Slave, the Best Picture Oscar winner of 2013, this is an incredible movie with an astonishing ensemble cast like Chiwetel Ejiofor and Michael Fassbender who got Oscar nominations for their performances. But talk about one of the signature debuts in film of the 2010s. Lupita Nyong'o. Nobody really knew who she was. And we were all flabbergasted, completely in awe of her talents in that movie. From the moment she first appears on screen as the slave, Patsy, you cannot look away. Right there at the beginning, she had such a command of her craft and command of this character. She is spectacular in this movie and she was the only choice that year to win Best Supporting Actress at the Oscars. As I explored in a recent video all about this race, Jennifer Lawrence had a shot to overtake her at the Oscars, given that Lawrence won Supporting Actress at both Golden Globes and BAFTA. And I don't know about you, but I was scared. Like, I was nervous. I'm like, do not let this happen. Lawrence is very funny in American Hustle, but come on. Over Nyong'o in 12 Years a Slave, that would not have aged very well. I think Lawrence on the night was relieved to not win. She had to know that would have been overkill. Two Oscars and acting, 
two years in a row. It would have been too much. Lupita Nyong'o for 12 Years a Slave was the deserving Oscar winner that night. And for her extraordinary performance in Steve McQueen's 12 Years a Slave, Lupita Nyong'o is and will always be the number one Best Supporting Actress Oscar win of the 2010s. When I look down at this golden statue, may it remind me and every little child that no matter where you're from, your dreams are valid. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and let me know in the comments below what is your Oscar ranking for Best Supporting Actress of the 2010s, and we'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.